We're back out here at the Big Lake today, and we're talking about what I think may be the goofiest bait I've ever seen. You don't want to miss this one. Stick around. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. I just wanted to see if I could get anything at all around here. But I'm going to try. I'm thinking that these fish... I am thinking that these fish are... They're suspending. They're wearing their suspenders. I don't think I may have to go with something a little bit more attractive. That's one. Is that that same little bitty dude? Alright. There we go. Oh, he had it pretty good. Boy, that fish is warm. That fish is warm. Let me get my let me get my hook back a little three quarter pound bass. Typical for the little lake. Make sure I'm actually recording. Am I actually recording? Alright, I'm actually recording. Typical little three quarter pound back. He is warm. We're going to say thank you. Gracias. Gracias, little, little fish. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And you guys know that I'm a stickler when it comes to bass patterns and bass behaviors. I've told you time and time again, you are not going to get around having to learn what bass patterns and behaviors are, especially on your body of water. It's like any relationship. It takes time to unlock it, to figure out those secrets, and to build the trust where you understand what's going on at any given time. Now, the best thing about it is, is once you have that aha moment on your particular lake or fishery or wherever it is, once you have that aha moment and you really get things to click and you're able to understand what those bass are doing, well, the good thing about that is, is that is portable. You can take that from one body of water to the next body of water and you can accelerate your learning process. What took you several years to learn on one lake, well, may only take you a couple of months to learn on another and then you transfer that to a couple of weeks and then a few days until you get better and better at it. As I've said before, Learning bass behavior and patterns is the best way you can put yourself on fish at any time, regardless of what the conditions are, what the seasons are, or anything. Now, when it comes to the other side of fishing, baits, lures, presentations, things of that nature, that's where I feel like we have the most leeway. We've got some wiggle room. I don't think that there's going to be any one thing that's going to turn those fish on or turn those fish off, regardless of what you may hear. As long as we're ticking certain boxes that those bass want ticked, well, they're going to bite what we're throwing at them. It, it, we just have to present it to them in the right way. You know, case in point, this thing right here, right? You guys know I like to come up with some wild things, throw some wild things. And if you remember this, this is the freak rig, right? This is where I put a switchblade on a Texas rig worm. I'm still fishing this, I'm still catching fish with it, and it's working great. Now to that end is this guy right here. This is a Strike King Rage Blade, and this is probably the goofiest looking bladed jig I've seen. Uh, it's wobbles right here, kind of like a wobblehead jig, and it's got this big wide lip that's connected directly to the weighted head. Now when it comes to the line tie, you've kind of got that little teeny tiny thing there to clip onto and that can be kind of a pain, but it works out all right. But either way, I mean, there's so many things going on here with this thing. I've seen this uh, at the shelf on my local tackle shop for a while, and I honestly thought that it was a topwater in the vein of the Z-Man Hellraiser. It's what I thought. But this is nothing like a Hellraiser. This is closer to a bladed jig. 
it thumps a lot like a bladed jig in the water and it works very similarly. As you can see, well, I've got a fluke style bait on the back of it to increase the action because if we said a million times before, right, if you put a boot tail, uh, something like a, a kite tack or a rage swimmer on that, it's just going to kill the action. It's going to kill the hunting actions of these. So that's why I like to use something like that. A, a, a spunk shad will also work really well, but I prefer a fluke. So what's up with this thing? Well, as you can see, this is something completely different. This is unlike any bladed jig I've ever seen. If you're familiar with it, if you've thrown one of these, put that in the comment section below. I would really like to know what your experiences are, what you think of it. Now, I'm still figuring out how to work this. I'm not really kind of working it like a actual real bladed jig. I'm working it somewhat differently based on what I'm seeing with the action. The action is slightly different and a lot of it has to do with that swinging head there. It, this is kind of like if someone took a bladed jig and a wobble head jig and put them together. Now the thing that I really like most about this is it's coming through the hydrilla so well. Usually a bladed jig comes through the hydrilla pretty good, pretty clean. But this thing right here, I got maybe just a little bit of hydrilla on it earlier, maybe one or two sprigs and that's all. So. So far with that, I am really, really impressed. But as I said before, I'm just now getting to work with it. I've worked with it for several hours. And well, these are the ways that I figured out how to cast it and how to retrieve it. And that's what's working so far for me. You see, I have it here. I've got a white fluke on the back of it, a little white soft plastic jerk bait. And I'm casting it out there. And I'm just kind of letting it sink down, letting it sink down a little bit. I'm kind of working it with both twitches of the rod tip, you know, and winding it in, kind of like that. And then you can, you know, I can feel it thump, 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 thump as it does that. It's got a pretty good sized blade on it, so it's going to want to rise. I can feel it thumping in the rod tip, and this is kind of what I'm doing with it, just kind of easing it along nice and slow a couple of little cranks here and there varying the speed i want to tick the tops of that vegetation and i can feel that vegetation as i'm coming through it but this has got a pretty good sized blade on it so it wants to rise that blade wants to come up so i don't want to go too fast with it because if i do i'm going to be pulling it out of the strike zone i want to be in a certain part of the water column. I want to be at that mid to deeper depth. That's kind of where I want to have this thing going. Because on a day like today, um, I'm thinking those fish are going to be a little bit more deep in the water. They kind of got their bellies to the bottom a little bit. This is shallow water anyway. I don't want to, ha I don't want to be below those bass. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to be so far above them. I kind of want to put it where it's an easy reach. So, I kind of want to stay above them just a little bit, which is why I want to take the tops of that grass with it. And that's just all I'm doing, is just kind of like that. Every once in a while, giving it a good couple of cranks. There we go. I got him. Oh, it's a good one, too. All hung up and gunk. Shoot, that was a good one. That was a good one, and, and the, the gunk got it. Now, if you see one of these online or in your local store, they're about $10, so about a mid-tier price as far as for a bladed jig. They're not like up there with a jackhammer or a slobber knocker, but, you know, they're a bit more than your regular $5 basic Z-Man chatterbait. But if you get a chance to pick one of these up, 
try it out. And if you do, let us know what you think. I'd really be interested what kind of success you're having with these. Because like I said, this is something completely different than anything I've ever fished before. Uh, I've only found these one place in my local area, and that's how I knew about it. Other than that, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen any ads for it. I've never seen anything. You know, you go to Tackle Warehouse or you go to Omnia Fishing, which thanks to everybody who's been using my links for Omnia Fishing, that really does help the channel. But I've never seen anything like it on any of those sites. Now, if I searched for it, I'm sure it would be there. But just as like, you know, in my suggestions or what other anglers looked for or anything like that, I've never seen anything like this. If you do pick one of these up, let us know what you think. We'd really be curious to find out. So there you have it. The Strike King Rage Blade. A really goofy looking bait. Is it a proven fish catcher? Well, not yet. The jury's still out on that. I'm just now beginning to work with it. We'll find out down the road. We'll revisit this and I'll let you guys know just exactly what I think of it. Final thoughts. But for right now, I actually really like it. It comes through the weeds so good. But we'll have to see how it does in the fish catching department. Right now, just a couple of dinks is all we've got to work with. And I'm going to see if I can improve on that. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.